All right. Well, in the morning, citizens of Cumuloville, uh, coming at you live from the middle of snow country here in the Parallelogram State. My name is Will Stroh. And a cast of characters is joining me today. I got the uh, Kenny Rogers, my Dolly Parton Adolfo out there. And uh, the island in my stream is Mr. Michael Bird. And we also got Mandy Evans, the King of My Kong. Now, if any one of you can name me one country that has not heard of Cloud Native Cumulus, I'm going to say you're just making up country names. Now, before we get too carried away, just quick heads up. We will be taking a webinar break for the holidays, so the month of November and December. We will come back in full force again in January, and if I had to wager a guess, I'd say we'll be discussing global namespace, but that needs buy-off from the webinar committee. Now, Mandy informs me she is not a committee, so we'll see what happens on that one. Second item of note. I am going to be focusing solely on Terraform today. Cloud formation works just as well, if that's what you're more comfortable with. However, Terraform seems to come a little faster when I was doing my testing on things. So I'm interested of everyone's time on the, on the call today. I'm just going to keep it on that track. Um, if you do have questions regarding cloud formation, by all means, please reach out in your Slack channel and we can address those there. All right, without further ado, let's uh, pop in here. Cloud native Cumulo, what the heck is it? So currently, Cumulo offers a cloud version, which is managed by Cumulo. So we handle all the upgrades for you. Uh, you have really just have GUI access and I guess uh, API access to the, to the cluster. But beyond that, it's kept in the Cumulo tenant. So cloud native Cumulo, that's a self-managed version. So it's all you've come to know and love from Cumulo but as I like to say, without SAS. So you still get the file system out there. It's the exact same file system as we'll see today. Uh, you, you do get the ability to add and drop nodes at your, at your whim if you so desire. Uh, as I said, you, you deploy it in your own tenant. That'll be via CloudFormation or Terraform. Today we're looking at Terraform. And currently it does roll out in AWS, uh, recently in Azure with 723. And I'm told GCP is on the pipeline. I do not have a date for that. But if either of those appeal to you, then you're in the right place. So here's a fancy looking diagram about it. At the top of the pop chart here, we have your regular protocol stack, which we all know and love. Um, then we come down here where we have instant type. So that's going to be your the, the size of the, of the CNQ nodes themselves. Uh, in our testing, we're going to be doing everything with, uh, I think it's an i4, i2x, but you can increase those as you need performance on it. And like I said, you can scale these. You can add nodes, subtract nodes at whim if you need you know, more, more oomph for something. So if you are, say, putting out a movie, let's say we're doing, uh, I don't know, it's uh, Halloween time. So what are they up to? 14 Halloween movies now, I think. So let's say we're doing John Carpenter's Halloween 22 and we're in the last final stages of production and we just need that final push, but we need some more compute power. At that point, we can spin up another 10 nodes, drop them in there, and we're good to go. Once we get done with that, say it takes a month, we can remove those 10 nodes and we're no longer paying for those at this point. Likewise, and, and separate from the nodes themselves, you actually have the persistent storage out there, which... We recommend a default of about, I think it's 500 terabytes um, right off the bat, just to give you a good size out there. But you can increase that at whim again. And, you know, if it's something that you need to spin up more of, it's great. If, and then, uh, you know, if you don't, you don't. So it's really handy in those cases. Now, I, I guess the other thing I will say, third item to mention, if we go up the first two, I will not be discussing pricing of any shape or form in this call. <laughs> If you need those details, please reach out to your sales folks. They do have all those, and they will be able to speak to those. Um, I specifically go into support just so I don't have to talk numbers. All right. So, again, we're focusing on Terraform here today. So we do have a couple of requirements out there. One, we're in Terraform itself, which is a programming download. Install on your client. Not a problem. Two, you're going to need a key pair. This key pair needs to be in the same uh, same region as your VPC. Uh, if you ask me which regions we have available right now, I honestly couldn't tell you without having to look something up, but there's quite a few out there. 
thirdly, you need to set your buckets up. And there is a path for those that you'll need to focus on. Uh, we mentioned VPC. And then finally, the actual deployment itself. So for those playing the home game, Terraform, you can just, like I said, you can download it from this website out there from HashiCorp, install it on your system. I don't know if there's other ones out there. That's the one I tend to use. But if you have some other favorite Terraform client, that's perfectly fine too. There's nothing magical about that in this case. Again, this will be just installed on your machine. Your machine will will run the commands and kick them over to, in our case, AWS today, since we're doing on that one. All right, key pairs. Again, these need to be in the same region as your VPC. My VPC is going to be in US West 2 today. So that is where my key pair resides. If you try to do it in a different region, it will not talk. Uh, likewise, because regions are separate in this case, you know I have a key pair sitting out there in US East 1. It's perfectly fine to be named WSTRO key pair. And that works, you know, I have one in US West 2 also named WSTRO key pair. So feel free to just stick one in every region if you want. I don't know if you get charged on those, to be honest. All right, Terraform files, you will get these from Nexus. So if you go to the download page in Nexus, it used to just have a little thing there called Cumulo Core Releases. Now there's another drop down that says deploy cloud native Cumulo. So you'll click on that one and that will give you all the links you need to the files in question. If you don't want to install the latest and greatest, there's a drop down where you can install prior versions, but honestly, Nice and grace is usually pretty good, so I'd recommend that route. If you do not have access to Nexus, or if you have questions about it, or it's not showing up, again, just reach out to your Slack channel. Uh, your CSM can certainly get you situated there. All right, your bucket setup. This is going to be an important case. This determines where we actually look for our installation files. So in this case, if you are to, you know, again, we're going to... Amazon out here, if you look at S3, it'll be buckets, bucket name, then Cumulo, Cumulo Core installed in the version out there. So for example, in this case, I was installing 722. So you're gonna have two things out there. You're gonna have the uh, Debian version. I, I installed the Debian version because I'm comfortable with it. There is also an RPM version out there. But in my case, I just installed the Debian one and the host configuration tar GZ file. You do not need to untar that. You do not need to un Zip it. Just leave it as is. Terraform takes care of the uh, VPC. As we mentioned, it needs to be in the same region as your key pair. I don't know about you guys. My networking is not up to par with networking teams. So I highly recommend if you have any questions on, on your VPC, point those to your network team. At the end of the day, you really just need a gateway out to S3 so that you can uh, talk to your newly formed cluster. But beyond that, uh, it's in the hands of the in the hands of the committee at that point. So talk to your network team. All right. Lastly, deployment. And this is the uh, the fun part here. So we have two separate things that we're discussing here. One we have the persistent storage, and then two we have the compute nodes. So, and we'll we'll take a look at this here when we do the the live action here in a second, but. There are a couple things to keep in mind. These are the only actual fields you need to change. So deployment name, and the region. Uh, prevent, destroy, I change it just so I can tear them up and tear them down easy. I think the default is true. I do flip it over to false. Uh, in your case, if you're actually putting production storage out there, you'd want it as, as uh, true. So some, some joker like me just can't come in and blow things up. Uh, soft capacity limit. This is going to be your how much space we sort of set a marker out at, if you will. Again, we default down to 500 terabytes, which seems to be good for most folks. Uh, if you do need to increase this, you can certainly increase it on the fly. Not a problem there. As we drive home the point here with the VPC and key pair, also the region that we deploy the persistent storage in must match those because it needs to talk to everything. Now, for those of you who have not done Terraform before, it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. Again, we'll see, we'll take a look at one of these here in a second. Uh, once you do finish editing your file, you do have to run this trifecta of commands here. 
a Terraform init, a plan, and an apply. And that will go ahead and create the buckets out there that you need, create, get the back end storage going, and then bring up the nodes. If you change things along the line, like let's say I change my soft capacity limit from 500 terabytes to a, a petabyte, really at that point, all you need to do is the Terraform plan and apply. And I've been told by some people, you don't even need to do the plan. I feel a lot better doing it, but that's up to you. All right, in the main Terraform file, so the, the previous one was in our persistent storage directory. Again, this will all make a lot of sense here in a second. In the main file, we do have three different sections we need to talk to. So one, our deployment name, that's just what it's going to be called, our, where our bucket is, our prefix in the region. Again, straightforward stuff. Then we have some AWS specific ones, such as our key pair name, our VPC, our subnet, and whatever region those are in. And then lastly, we have Cumulo stuff. So the cluster admin password. A lot of you have become adept at plugging in admin123 for any new clusters. That does not meet AWS's requirements. So I recommend throwing an exclamation point on the end there. It works out really well before you go off and change it to something different. The persistent storage deployment unique name. We'll see that come into play here. This actually comes from, whoops, let's go back one. That'll actually come from when we run the Terraform apply on our persistent storage. So you have to run it against the, pers the persistent storage first, get that unique name, and then you'll plug it in here at that point. Uh, lastly, we have the instant type, or instance type, and that will be determined how big of a node you need. Again, for most folks, the default works perfectly fine. Uh, if you do need something more performant, then you can certainly change that up. Again, I don't know cost on those, so be wary, buyer beware. Uh, the other thing you can change out here also is the number of nodes, which we'll see when we increase some nodes out here in a cluster. Uh, default is four. I believe with the latest version of, of uh, CNQ, they'd let you create a three node cluster now. But in our case, we're just going to focus on four and add some more in there and possibly pull them out if we want to. All right. So again, with that, you'll run through the same three steps, the init, plan, and apply. Bingo, bang, boom. If everything works, <clears throat> it takes about four minutes, cluster's created, and you're good to go. So <clears throat> I don't see any open questions out there, so let's just blow this thing up with a live demo and see what's happening out here. All right. Um, I went ahead and created another one this morning just so we have something to look at while we we're waiting on this. This is what happens when you let your seven-year-old name your cluster. He named it Dog. Uh, that's cool. He was named after a dog, so I suppose it's fitting. But what we'll go ahead and do is over here, I got a Terraform directory that I went ahead and created. Let's make this a little bit wider. So as I said, there's a persistent storage directory out here. We'll go ahead and see the end of that guy. And there's your files out there. The one we're interested in, again, Terraform TFVAR. So we'll go ahead and VI this guy. If you're Emacs, I apologize. All right. So again, in this case, our region is, is already there. It's US West 2. And uh, prevent destroy, again, I put it over to false just so we don't have to worry about getting prompted for it. Uh, my deployment name is CNQ Webinar Storage and soft capacity limit, 500 terabytes. Again, you can scale this thing up if you need to, and we'll actually uh, give, a, give a whirl on that guy here in a second. All right, so as we said, we need a Terraform init. And all of these go fairly quick, all things considered. The most dramatic one is the Terraform apply when it actually creates everything. Uh, in my testing, that shoots for about, like I said, about four and a half minutes for a cluster creation. And then if you forget to type yes here, it takes a lot longer. Just let me know. Not that that would have happened to me many a time. All right. <clears throat> now. Again, we have our deployment unique name here. So this is what we're interested in, this, this little bit here. 
So we'll come back up here to the main directory and change this guy. If you spell unique correctly, it works. U I Q U E. Oh, oh, you know, it's an underscore. There we go. All righty. So we had one out here earlier. Let's go ahead and throw this guy in. And actually, let me just go ahead and uh, cat that file there. So if we look through this guy, or where he starts out here, um, as I mentioned, there are these things that we're going to need to change out here. So again, my password, admin123, exclamation point. You give a name out here. You tell what version you're going to. Now we can upgrade these things perfectly fine, and we'll sh we'll walk through an upgrade here in a second. Uh, uses it doesn't oddly enough it does not use the cloud version of the upgrade file. It uses the normal upgrade file. So if you have an on-prem system right now, I know one little trick a lot of folks like to do is they will have one primary cluster, if you will, that will have they'll download upgrade files there and then set up a replication job to all their other clusters and kick those files over there so they're automatically staged for them. They don't have to worry about anything. In the case of CNQ, it uses the exact same upgrade file. So if you wanna do something like that, which we're gonna actually do in this demo here, assuming all goes well, uh, you, you can uh, do that with the exact same files. All right. So again, our storage unique name is this guy here. We're pulling these up as I4I2X large. And we're doing a four node count. So let's see if everything works. If it's not going to work, it's now would be the time. So we'll do a chair for a minute. All right. Well, We'll let that guy go in the background. Like I said, this takes about four and a half, five minutes to get going. If it takes longer than that, something's probably wrong. Uh, most common thing is it can't actually reach the S3 gateway. So that's a networking team question at that point. Um, focus on them and see what they can do for you. As you can see here, as this comes up, here we are creating the, the buckets for our storage out there for our four nodes. And it's going to go about its merry way. I'm going to move this off to the side here just a bit. And we'll just keep an eye on that guy over there. Like I said, this is uh, one I spun up earlier today. It is a straight up four node cluster out here. Now, the main, the one thing you will notice is on your dashboard, we don't have any sort of concept of a capacity donut or anything like that because this is a very changeable value. So we don't really focus on it there. If you compare this to your on-prem one, it'll say, you know, total use use uh, use data out there is, or available data rather is however many terabytes. Uh, if you do need to see what your, your persistent storage is summed up to, it is in the, in the uh, overview over here. In this case, 500, we'll crank that up to a petabyte here in a bit. Outside of that, everything else is exactly the same as you'd expect to see on your on-prem cluster out there. So I went ahead and created an upgrade directory out here. I put a file out there just so I could upgrade to it. It's hanging out here in Capacity Explorer. Once we get this guy up and running, see how he's doing. Oh, we got the Python 3.8, so that's always a plus sign. Once we get that guy up and running, we'll go ahead and set up a replication over to it. And again, it's just exactly the same as you'd do if it was your on-prem clusters out there. So as far as that's concerned, it's it's really straightforward and easy in those in those cases. You know, it's it certainly beats having to go off and rack and stack something up in your data center, wait, I don't know, two weeks for the network guys to get some cables and plug those things in and actually get things online. So if you need something quick and dirty and easy, this is kind of the way to do it. All righty, where are we at here? Waiting for node one to run. That's a good sign. 
So we're about a minute 30 into this section. You know, there was, uh, what do we have? 30 seconds up here, 10 seconds here. So another half minute up there. All right. While we're waiting on that guy, like I said, in the, if we were to go into this again, you're going to have normal things like you would expect to see. So in this case, I go into node one. We have floating IPs out there, just like we would expect anything else. Uh, you, if you do look at your drive types, you see these are a little different. <laughs> You're not getting a, a, your regular 10 terabyte drive or something like that. Um, so they are a little odd oddball you're looking out there. But beyond that, not a whole lot else that, that really needs to go on from, from that perspective. Let's see here. We're at 2.30, so about halfway through. If there are any questions or comments or concerns, please feel free to throw them out in the Q&A out there. It looks like a ghost town right now. That's a Halloween reference for you. Now, one, one uh, a common question that we do end up seeing out here is, you know, what happens when I do need to add more nodes? What, you know, do I have to tear down a cluster? Do I create a new cluster and, and replicate everything over there, et cetera? Not at all. All you'd end up doing is going into that Terraform file, the main one, change the node count from four to five or five, four to six or whatever. And at that point, it would go ahead and you'd, you'd rerun the, Terraform plan and apply commands, and that would go ahead and create two new node instances out there, and those would get added into your cluster at that point. You would see a rebalance take place out here, which we'll see as soon as this thing comes up. Uh, you'd see a rebalance take here in the cluster overview, and then you'd see two additional nodes or three additional nodes, however many you add, pop up down here. What you won't see is a change in the usable space. That will still say 500 terabytes because again, all you're changing is the compute nodes, not the actual, uh, not the actual storage on the back end itself. Uh, we do have a question out there. Will, where do the IP addresses come from? Well, when you have two IPs that like each other a whole lot, they make little baby IPs. And it looks like Phil's going to go ahead and answer that question, which is great because I'm forming a cluster here, folks. We got business to attend to. Thanks, Phil, for grabbing that. All right. So we're on the tail end here. Four minutes, 20 seconds in, updating cluster tags. And what you'll see in a second here, hopefully, there we go. Bring up the volumes. And what we'll get, something similar to this here, where it actually runs down through and the provisioner will wrap up, will be successfully provisioned. And then we'll go ahead and give out all of this jive. There we go. Let's just pull this back over this way. So 722 and on, we do worry about floating IPs in CNQ platform. So that is something to be aware of. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and take this one here for node one, just because it's given to me. Let's go ahead and grab that guy. And we will pop up a new tab over here. And there is our brand spanking new cluster. So all told, we're looking at what? Uh, five and a half minutes there, plus let's say a minute and a half on the front end, so six minutes. Not too bad, all things considered. Now again, as we said, this is a straight up, everything still folks works and talks like a normal cluster would. So for just for grins, let's take a look here. So I got my four node cluster out here. Let's just pull up node one and grab one of these floater doers. 
and let's go ahead and set up our application. We'll say the upgrade directory and we'll just call it upgrade on the other side. And when we're talking between the two, and we're waiting for authorization over here. We'll go ahead and bring that up. Authorize. Go back to the source. We'll refresh this guy here in a second. And that's already over and done with. So let's go ahead and take a look on this guy. There we go. Oops, I had to refresh at the same time it said refresh. So let's go ahead and take a look over here. We should have something in Capacity Explorer. There's my upgrade directory and I have a file out here. Cool, let's upgrade this thing, why not? Get past that uh, AD bug, I think it was. Take this moment to say while we're uh, preparing our upgrade, if you are not on the on the uh, customer channel out there, let me get the actual channel name for you. Uh, Community Cumulo Announcements. That would be a good one for you to get on. Uh, that's where we do drop things like little bugs out there and whatnot. Uh, we have someone that does have to drop off early. Where can I find the session recording later? That will be posted in about a week's time. Uh, we'll actually post it in that channel, the community announcements channel. But I will ask Adolfo to take note of your name out there, and we'll make sure it gets kicked over to you directly just in case you aren't in that channel. All right. Now, again, just like any other normal upgrade, if there were – if this was did require a platform update on here, you would see the option to do a rolling upgrade if needed. But I think a lot of these just go straight forward as, uh, as straight up upgrades. Let's do a reload there. Boop. And as you can see, we are up and dandy on 7232. Certainly know one of the folks on this call. We usually get up about three in the morning to do upgrades. It takes about, I don't know, 20 minutes to do. This goes a little bit quicker. Now, let's say we want to change something. So first off, let's go ahead and pull up our cluster overview again, where we have 500 terabytes. We're going to pop over here. And again, this is the one we're interested in playing. So let's go ahead and let's bump this bad boy up. Let's just do, I don't know how much I'm paying for that thing, so let's keep it a petabyte. So we'll go ahead and do, redo a Terraform plan out there. It'll tell you what's changing. And we'll do a Terraform apply. We'll go ahead and say yes. Okay, cool. So now Terraform knows that it wants to go ahead and do this. That's not going to be referenced over here yet. If we go ahead and refresh over here on this guy, still showing our 500 terabytes. Not a problem. So we'll come back up to the main root directory. Do a Terraform plan here. Again, I feel more comfortable doing that. Uh, whether or not you actually have to, up for debate. Okay. And let's see if we can break anything. So we'll go ahead and say yes to that fella. We'll move this guy over here some, just so we can keep an eye on him. Do it that way. So we're sitting out here. We destroy our uh, uh, the thing we actually destroy, just the provisioner instance. So that's not really a problem. Don't be don't be too concerned by that. 
So we go through, we're going to modify some things here. And if all goes according to plan, we'll let things move along. Now, normally, if you needed to add more space, you'd be looking at adding in a whole nother node at that point. There's really no two ways around that. Can't just add a shelf or anything like that. Uh, in this case, again, all it is is changing things that you're talking to the back end on. So just more disks that, in this case, Amazon's throwing your way. Do a refresh over here. Much like the elevator button, you know, if you could just keep it and refresh enough times, it'll go faster. As you can see, we're increasing soft capacity limit. Let's see if that's reflected yet. Not yet. Still creating. I'm on cluster. You can do it for me. Oh, there we go. We're getting a little bit. A little more. You can do it. All right. There we go, one petabyte. Just add another 500 terabytes of storage out there. Cost and Ted Cumulo some more money today, but that's okay, he's a good guy. All right, again, you know, th this IP address has not changed at all. We're still 128 up here. So we haven't changed anything we're, from the, the node perspective. All we're doing is tacking on more back in storage. But let's say we need some more compute space out there. Let's go ahead and take a look. Down here, the node count. Let's change it up to six. Six is a good number of nodes. Now, in this case, we don't, we're not changing anything with persistent storage, just on the compute node, so we don't need to do anything with that persistent storage side. In this case, we'll just do a Terraform plan again. Bloop. All righty, and as you can see out here, it actually says known after apply. So this is this is really what tells you, oh, I'm going to be changing stuff out here. And this will go a little bit quicker since it doesn't have to do the whole stand up of the the back end of everything. <clears throat> So we'll go ahead and let this run through. And what you'll see out here on this side of the house is you will see two additional nodes pop up down here in this case. You will see the little data protected thing go back to a rebalance as it transfers data over to these quote unquote new nodes, even though it's not really doing a whole lot in that front. All righty. We do start counting at zero, so AWS instance node four is, or AWS instance node four is really, you know, node five in that case, and six. Doing the CS counting, if you will. All right, well, that's coming up there. Oh, come on, Barney. We're down here waiting for boot. Okay, so it's booting these guys up at this point. We'll just go ahead and sit here, I guess, and see if uh, see how long these guys actually take. I mean, before we're looking about what we have here, about 30 seconds on that end. So let's call it 30 plus another 20. Call it a minute there. Come on, other nodes, you can do it for me. Now, again, just to drive home the point, I know we've mentioned a few times here, but just to make sure it's perfectly crystal clear, 
once we get these nodes added, this is simply compute stuff here. This is not actual data space getting added. So, you know, in, in difference of a on-prem cluster, if you will, where you'd add another node and suddenly get another, I don't know, 500 terabytes, you're not going to see that change here unless you change it on the persistent side. Four. All right. Come on, nodes, you can do it for me. While we're waiting on that, we'll just do a little cleanup action over here. Let's go ahead and delete this guy. Let's keep him around. Now, I will say, if you are just spinning these up, there is cost associated with it. I'm not sure what that cost actually is. Obviously, you don't want to let these things run longer than they need to. So I would recommend if you are, that's a slow browser in my sense. Um, if you are done playing around, if it's not production, if you, in that case, I, I do recommend issuing the Terraform Destroy out there, which will go through and, and blow things away. You do end up having to do it from, as you saw, we did have the persistent storage and then we had the regular Terraform root directory. You want to do it in reverse in that case. You do a Terraform destroy from the root directory and then go in the persistent storage and do a Terraform destroy there, which will blow away the buckets. Oh, I can't add nodes running version 7.2.3. Oh, no. So I guess I can't do that in this case. That's a bummer. I'm not sure why that, uh, I guess that was my upgrade that killed it off there but that's how you'd normally do it um so all that being said let's go ahead and do this here um that's not exiting too well let's do that all right so as i was saying what you'll go ahead and do if we're you know if we're done with dog in this case which unbeknownst to my seven-year-old we're definitely done with dog let's go ahead and do a terraform destroy out here and this is coming, let me control C out of there. This is going to be coming from, there we go, the main Terraform directory. So Terraform, oh, I don't know where those fingers are at. Terraform destroy here. Yes. Oops. Okay, fine. Actually, you know what we can do while we're waiting on that? Let's do this. Let's see if we can't get this thing working for us. Let's go ahead and do a Terraform Destroy here as well. We'll do a yes there. And over here, we'll go ahead and do a yes. So the holdup is, is my version of Terraform is not actually in sync with my version of, of uh, Cumulative Core that I'm loading up on there. So it's having a hard time talking to the, talking between things to get uh, my additional nodes added. So let's go ahead and see if we, we got yeah, about 15 minutes here. Let's go ahead and see if we can blow these things away in time, spin up another one, and then we just won't do that replication portion of it. And we'll be in ideally in good shape out there. And if you want to play along at home, you can see, oh my gosh, what just happened to my cluster here? So we're we're deleting the the nodes out from underneath it basically. So it's in this really weird state right now. <laughs> it's not gonna work out too well for anybody. Well, we'll disconnect that one too. Cluster went away. Yeah. 
having been uh, privy to unracking some nodes in my lifetime, I will say this is a lot quicker uh, method of getting rid of things than having to undo a lot of screws. All right, so we did it from the main directory. Now at this point, we pop into persistent storage and go ahead and remove things here as well. So we do a Terraform to store here. And we'll say yes. Oh, we have some delete buckets that didn't uh, didn't like that. So these are ones that I was playing around with earlier. So that's why he's getting confused. But that's okie dokies. This is the one I'm actually interested in over here. So if you do get these errors where it says, you know, the bucket's not empty, what you have to do at that point is go into AWS, blow in the bucket there. It'll force you to type in something along the lines of permanently delete, I think it is. But that's just so make sure that you know what you're doing out there. All right, let's try it over here. Cool. All righty. So let's see if we can break this. It's entirely possible. Uh, let's see here. Okay, let's go ahead and edit that guy again. All right, pop quiz. We grab that guy there. Go up one directory. Change him there. And let's go ahead and run on this guy. I mean, awfully optimistic that it's going to work. Sweet. All right, so let's give us another four minutes to run through here. And we'll have that guy up and running, ideally, if it doesn't run into some uh, some confusion with tearing down a cluster and immediately building another one back up. But I think we should be okay. I'm, I will say I'm cautiously optimistic at this point. Now, if we pull up the other guy here, oh, yeah, here, this thing should be totally, totally having a bad day. Yeah, he's not resolving at this point, which is fine. Totally expected. That guy's off in limbo mode somewhere, so he's cool. Alrighty, let's see how we're doing here. Mountains down here in Colorado got eight inches of snow overnight. They're telling me it's coming my way here by uh, noon, so we'll see what happens. When I was growing up out here, we could uh, basically set your calendar to the first snow was always on Halloween and the last snow was always on May Day, so May 1st. And that was pretty much uh, pretty much standard throughout the, throughout the time I lived here. I left and came back. And the first year back, we got snow in June. That was really weird. Got like six inches of snow and then just disappeared overnight. So, all right, we're looking good here. So, I'm optimistic on this front. Again, if you have any questions or anything out there, feel free to chime in. I think Phil's been doing a, oh, we got we have four of them out there. Sheesh. Phil's been doing a good job on that one. Thank you, Phil. All 
already. So about a minute and a half in. Let's call it two. We include the top stuff. It's about another two minutes here. Now, as we're waiting for this guy to come up, um, let me go ahead and grab this here. Where'd we go? There we go. My, my window with 800 tabs on it. Let's grab this one. This is a simulator cluster and bring him up here for a second. Uh, while we're waiting for this guy to come up, I will say, uh, ooh, maybe my simulator's down too. That'd be great. Um, let's close that one out. While we're waiting for this guy to come up, if any of you are interested in doing things along the lines such as snapshot locking, we discussed it a little while ago in one of our mini webinars. I want to say it's back in May. Uh, we will be putting a CS doc out about it here shortly. That is, uh, it's, it's just a nice driven method of going about it, and it's it's not having to read through all the the jibber jabber out there in the in the docs portal. Docs portal is great; it does go into great detail. But if you just need something up quick and running. Uh, we will have something here posted in the next uh, week or so. So feel free just to reach out in your Slack channels, and we can get that going your way. If you're not aware of what snapshot locking is, it basically prevents you from deleting snapshots early out there. So if you did have a bad actor out in your uh, in your data center, um, well, if you're in your data center, I guess you got other problems. But if he's on your network, and hops onto your cluster, you know, the first step most folks end up doing when they want to do something nefarious is get rid of snapshots. So snapshot locking prevents you from getting rid of snapshots without having the actual key for it out there. So like I said, uh, that should come out in the next week or so. So if you do have a need for that or just interest, uh, general interest is fine as well. Uh, we will get that posted out there and just go ahead and ask in your Slack channels. All right, on the tail end of things here. Dokies, and with any luck, we'll be happy. And bring this gap. So again, this is just our straight up four node cluster, nothing fancy here. Oops, I always forget that extra exclamation point at the end. There we go. So now let's go ahead and change our node count here. Oh, we got six nodes here. Did I, uh, did I just totally leave that that way? Oh, I guess I did. Okay, let's see if we can't play with this and uh, add a couple out there. Chad Kimo is going to come looking for my paycheck here before too long. Well, let's see what we got. Terraform. Let's just play in. All right. Let's see if we can get these guys out this time. <clears throat> Having done that upgrade without actually updating anything else, I think it bumped things up. So we'll see where we're at in this case. Now there's a question out there of, okay, great. I can go ahead and increase in size, but what do I do afterwards? Can I decrease in size? And the answer to that is absolutely you can. Um, if we let's see, let's see what our uh, how good our searching is today. Let's pop over here. Let's just plug in C and Q. Yeah, it should get me something in the ballpark. All righty. 
that looks like a promising one. So if you go into this deploying cloud with Terraform, this goes through all the steps we kind of went through here. Toward the tail end of things, if I recall it correctly, so there's adding a node to a cluster, removing a node from a cluster. So this is actually run from a script here, this remove node script. What you will need is the unique deployment name. That's that one that we copied from the persistent storage uh, output and pasted it into the main Terraform output. So you will need that one there. And basically you just run the script, it comes in the utilities directory. Um, this one, let's pop this over here while we're doing it. So you have this utilities directory here. In this case, you just run this remove nodes. And it'll give you a rundown of everything you need. But basically, you tell it your current node count, what how many nodes you want to go to, the final node count, and pass it that, uh, that unique deployment name. And you should be in good shape on that one. Since we're coming up on the hour here, I will leave you that for your homework. But let's see if we can get these other two nodes added here. And then we'll go ahead and uh, call it a day on that one. Everyone can go out, get their Halloween costumes ready. Pardon me. Oh. I will say this page is very good, not just because I prefer it, but it is very good as far as giving you a rundown of all the steps you actually need to go through to bring this thing up and, and get it happy into a state. Um, so this is pretty invaluable if you are going down the road of deploying a, a CNQ system out there. As I said, you know, this one we've all been doing, we've been doing it through the AWS side of things. Um, with 73, you can cer certainly do that under Azure as well, if that's your uh, cup of tea. <laughs> I myself has, have not had a whole lot of practical experience with deploying under Azure, just because, you know, it was, it's been with AWS for so long at this point, and 723 came out the other week. Um, but I imagine it's very close to similar in the, in the same uh, same vein there. If you are a cloud formation type, you know, if you like it being mini driven or not mini driven, GUI driven, I guess, you can certainly go over here and this will walk you through how to, how to do things on that front. Um, it does seem to take a little more longer, a little bit longer to deploy through cloud formation. I don't know if that's just because it's having to make those calls over to the CLI at that point or for where it's getting hung up at. But I would say through through cloud formation, it seems to take about 10 minutes, I'd say, versus the four and a half that we saw. Um, you know, is that big is that a problem in the big scheme of things? Probably not. But it is something to keep in mind. Let's see here if we've started to register these yet or not. So we're adding nodes to cluster. There we go. So there's my two new nodes out there. Again, in this case, all I've added is extra compute power. I have not added any extra space out there. If I wanted to add extra space, simply change that persistent sto uh, persistent storage Terraform value out there up to whatever you need it to be. Then rerun through the Terraform plan and apply. You'll get really comfortable with those commands. And then at that point, go back to the main one, run it there as well, and you'll be in good shape. All right. Well, I hope this was somewhat useful to you. I'm going to go uh, clean up my, my directories out there and clean out some buckets. Uh, if you do have any other questions or think of something that after the fact, feel free to reach out your channel or we'll be more than happy to jump in there with you. Uh, as you 
go about your uh, next couple days here, at least the next uh, 24 hours and, well, let's call it 36 hours and if you're in the United States. Uh, if you do see any talking dogs, they are probably actually just kids dressed up as dogs. So don't be too concerned. Give them some candy and go on about your day. Alrighty, folks. Uh, we're signing off here in Cumulaville, so I hope you have a good one. Take care.